Crews went in 10 minutes after the deck was closed and started unbolting the steel plate that's been covering the old joint. One of the things that happened last night is to raise Pier 31 five inches. We'll keep it on a hydraulic jack and then over the next few weeks install the bearings at that location and the adjacent pier. The bearings, similar to the ones recently installed here on the Antioch Bridge, will allow the Dumbarton Bridge and its foundations to move independently of each other during a major earthquake. The process has caught the attention of the public and people like Ray Studer, who is steeped in historic knowledge about the Dumbarton Bridge. I do a monthly tour on the history of the Don Edwards Wildlife Refuge, uh, going back to about 1850, following uh, salt production and covering some of the uh, things that were built, such as the railroad bridge, the 1926 highway bridge. If you look at some of these photos, you can see the Dumbarton Bridge, uh, the Don Edwards Refuge here in the background. Okay. And in 1984, if you were to go on YouTube, you can actually find a picture of the old 1926 bridge right next to the 1984 bridge. And they are blowing up the center section of that old 1926 bridge, which leaves us with the two fishing piers that we have today. From that fishing pier, you can clearly see the left side of the deck at Pier 31 has been raised five inches to make room for the new seismic bearings. It seems like a pretty tough job to get that all done in three days. There will be, at the completion of this entire retrofit for the bridge, there will be a total of 96 bearings. Um, this, at this point in the project, there are about 30 that have been installed. Uh, so the 96 Monday. bearings will take, they'll take the rest of the few months to do that. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. That's, now that's the other thing. I've seen how big jets. those bearings are. How do they hoist them up there and get them in place? So they pick up the bearing, lower it over the side, and they have a rail system where it carries it and allows them to put it up and they jack it into place. As you're out here on a regular basis, as these work platforms go away, that'll tell you that this part is completely done. This joint's going to be able to accommodate several feet. It, you know, can, can you still hear me? It'll accommodate everyday movement from temperature, but also several feet of movement in a large-scale earthquake. That's the point of the work that we're doing today. What's critical here is that we have two different types of bridges. What I'm standing on right now is a, a steel-reinforced concrete viaduct, so primarily concrete. On the other side, the main span, is a steel structure, a box girder. And so these two come together, they move different ways, and this joint will be able to accommodate that. All the support plates, all the 12 support plates are now in place here on the, on the Dumbarton Bridge, and we're ready for our first concrete pour. Now this is a very specialized concrete mix that we're going to be pouring. It's a little more soupy than others. It's called self-consolidating concrete. And basically what that does is there's a mix that's been designed so that it can pour directly in underneath these plates and completely fill the volumes under there. The special concrete is tested under the watchful eyes of Chief State Bridge Engineer Brian Maroney. Here you go. It spreads like pancake batter, exactly like it should. You see how even out at the edges, see how there's rock? Yes. That went all the way out there. Okay. Now, if you took regular concrete and you just put a bunch of water in it, uh -huh. what would happen is all that water would go out this way. I mean, that's, 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 that is like, that's, that's beautiful. That's okay. what it is. So whenever we take our bridges out of service, it's a great opportunity for us to get a lot of different types of maintenance work done. Some of this work is being done by Caltrans. Other, like this barrier rail, is being done by the Bay Area Toll Authority, where we have this bright, shiny new barrier that's going to be in place uh, when motorists uh, take over and come back onto the bridge on Tuesday morning. The joint work is completed. Since the bridge was raised five inches and the approach was not, Caltrans will put in a 100-foot tapered approach. The polyconcrete ramp won't even be noticed by drivers. They know that because the same thing was done on the western approach to the bridge Memorial Day weekend. The work was completed Monday evening, reopening to traffic at 7.19 p.m., more than nine hours ahead of schedule. The seismic retrofit will be completed early next year. That work will not require any more full bridge closures. On the Dumbarton Bridge, Mark Jones reported.